Hey, how are you? Welcome to Live from the Archives. We're here at the incredible uh, David Bieber Archives, and David Bieber himself sitting here uh, with us uh, at the Norwood Space Center. I'd like to send special thanks to Motherload.tv, an amazing online curated archive and multimedia portal where you can find all sorts of cool new artists. They have a partnership with the archives here, so um, check that out. My name is Dave Wedge. I'm a journalist. I write for Vice. I was a reporter at the Boston Herald for 14 years. I covered a lot of the Boston music scene over the years, and I've written a couple of books, uh, one about the Boston Marathon bombings and one about the, um, the young man who started the Ice Bucket Challenge, a guy named Pete Frades, who lives up in Beverly, Massachusetts. And um, today I'm, I'm here just blown away by what you've, what you've created, David. And... Um, I'm going to get around and introduce everybody, and then we'll have a little conversation about what we're doing. So to my right here is William Desmond, also, uh, fondly known around Boston as just Des. So Des, uh, you created the Sound Museum, kind of a Boston rock institution. Um, what brings you here today? Well, David is an amazing person. Um, he uh, <clears throat> was very supportive of my band when it first started out. He's still supportive to this day. Like the Bent Men. Yeah, the Bent Men, right. Thank you. I mean, Dave, has, he's just got this great uh, personality and zen about him. Um, and I, I absolutely love the guy. So, I mean, I can't say, you know, I, I just can go on and on about him. He supported us, the Bent Men, when we first started, before anybody knew us. Which was what year? What year did the band start? Well, when we started playing out, it was about 84. 84? Right. Yeah. You know? So. Let, let's watch how we have a, a little clip of some of the, the okay. Batman highlights. Okay. <laughs> said uh, 20 more years well it, that was those clips were probably 15 years ago plus you know some of them and we've generated uh, some more recently sensory overload man oh yeah 
A lot yeah, of fun. Thank you for playing. Where did you get all that stuff? <laughs> Holy. Archives. Well, archives. 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 Uh, <laughs> this one. Yeah. This one. But I have, to say, I have yeah. to say that I saw the Bent Men at once. J.J. Gonson's Club on uh, Highland Ave in Somerville. What was it a month ago? Lost yeah, February, none, February. none of the potency and the drama and the ice cream sandwiches tossed to the crowd. <laughs> it's just it, much what, to their awesome. chagrin. What amazing. you saw, what amazing. you saw on the screen, yeah. it's twice as intense today. Yeah. That's great. That's great. That's great. That's Let awesome. me bring in our, our next guest, uh, Billy Huff and his brother Paul, from right. the uh, brother, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, right? Yeah. and their uh, lover. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, from we couldn't afford the ice cream sandwiches. We had to do something. <laughs> whatever, uh, whatever packs the house. You, know? and you guys have a band called the Garage Dogs. We're going to hear from you uh, play a song in a couple of minutes. But, Billy, you have a stage show, Scream, Scream Along with Billy? Yes, I do. And tell us about the show. Scream Along with Billy was started when the Garage Dogs kind of moved to different cities for a period of time. And so I teamed up with Susan Goldberg, who plays bass with us now. She's from Space Pussy. who has been around forever. And um, we perform um, in Provincetown all summer long, and then we kind of tour in the wintertime and go. We play a lot in New York. And Tell us about the show. The show is the two of us mostly. We cover a different album every Friday night, which is kind of a pain in the ass. We've done about 200 of them. <laughs> 200 and, uh, different albums. We have. Full albums. Full albums. And we've wow. done everything from Dark Side of the Moon to Big Science from Laurie Anderson. But we do, you know, all the Lou Reed records and the Beatles records. So wow. it's fun. We, we build them organically. My brothers play with us a lot. So it's, um, we yeah. need a lot of help. And, um, and then I, I just talk. It really depends on how good the cocaine is that night. But sometimes I talk <laughs> a lot. Sometimes I talk a little. But I always talk. And people seem to like it. I yeah, and you, you're, it's a big draw in P-Town, and a lot of, you get a lot of celebrity guests. A lot of celebrity John guests, John Waters, yeah. I hear, is a big John fan. John Waters or? comes every Friday night that he's in town, yeah. And That's Gordon great. Gano from the Femmes plays with us, and Lily Taylor, the actress, sings with us. We've been incredibly lucky. Where, where did you grow up, Bill? Uh We grew up in California, and then in the Deep South when we then got out of the deep south very quickly and came up here. So. It sounds so deep you don't even say the name of the town. I know, I know. I know. Well, yeah. Can you tell yeah. us? Yeah. Yeah, it just sounds far away. What like state? Central Mississippi. Miss wow, that is deep yeah. south. Yeah. <laughs> and where, where around here did you guys live? In Boston? or We, we moved up to Somerville. Okay, cool. Uh, it lived was in awesome. uh, Somerville, the three brothers. And the bass player and all of yeah. our friends. And uh, uh, yeah. It was that crazy. Was... But we got to be a punk rock band in a house together for like five years and it, it was it, it was a mess but it was a lot of fun yeah, so it's tough i've got kids now so i can't really tell any of the stories <laughs> on video that's right that's right the kids they'll, they'll find that youtube thing <laughs> right, right. Yeah. wait till they tell you stories yeah. Yeah, fair enough, enough. Hey. <laughs> have you guys been here before or is this your first visit to no, this no. go ahead we played the opening um right? night we did the cars Fantastic. first record oh it's wow. kind of our stick so we, yeah the, we get hired yeah. to do records but um yeah, it's Chuck not from Motherload asked us to play the Cars first record. It's kind of this Boston kind in the of performance thing. space and, down, yeah, which was amazing yeah, down the hall yeah. building yeah. too. Yeah. Right? It was actually yeah. uh, we were worried about the acoustics, but they actually like figured out a way to kind of like mix it so that it was re it was it was really really fun. All wow. credit to the sound guys. Yeah, it was, yeah, totally. it was in a hangar. It sounded phenomenal. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. They did and you did what, which Cars album did you do? First one. The first one. Debut album because I think wow. it was such a great record. So. Wow. So you played the whole thing in its entirety. We did. Yeah. We did. And uh, what are your thoughts about what David's created here? It's fantastic. It's like porn. It's like, <laughs> for music people, it's like porn. You True, know? yeah. I mean, there's, there's, you know, everything from, I mean, you see, it's, it's all the way from, you know, Chuck Berry to Amy Winehouse and back again. I mean, it, it's kind of incredible. I mean, we love the older stuff. We were going through, looking for Lou Reed records over on the other side. But, um, no, I mean, it's, it's remarkable. I don't know that there's anything quite like it anywhere. It would be hard to... Yeah. Assembles so much. Yeah, stuff. it's just wonderful, especially now in, in a in an age where everything's moving to digital. Digital mm -hmm. to have a place that's tactile, right. where you have the actual vinyl, the mm -hmm. actual. It's just wonderful. It's you awesome. can get lost in here for days. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I, when I first walked in, you know, being a journalist and, and a writer, it, it blew me away that that all this stuff actually still physically exists. And what it also did was it it opened up. You know, watching the clips of your band and hearing about what you guys are doing. And all the different people that we're talking with and hearing David's stories, it's just, it's mind-blowing the amount of talent that has come through this city over the years. I mean, you know, you have all the ones that everyone knows, Aerosmith and, and you know, yeah. new, new Edition, New Kids, all that. But, I mean, there's just been so many bands that have come out of Boston and musical acts and 
actors and people that have had so much success mm -hmm. and you walk around here and it's like a living breathing reminder of that yeah i mean the collection is in all kinds of pop culture and various categories <coughs> it's very indiscriminate but because i have lived in boston for so long it's very boston centric mm -hmm. and what billy is saying is exactly right you know just you know the panorama of the talent that has been here in various iterations and de decades and sound styles and also the reflection of all of that talent in the various media mm -hmm. you know the the publications you know the fanzines yeah. you know skunk piss you know uh, <laughs> the noise you know boston groupie news all these different you know the, acts the and works of passion and, yeah, you know right. that were created because yeah. people loved it i mean the same way that someone like michael morata is doing what he's doing at vanyaland right yeah. now yeah. you know it's yeah. like there's a, there's a, a, a compelling reason to keep doing these things yeah. and spreading the word, getting it out there. Well, well, you know, it's funny because part of what we're talking about here is like anachronism. You know, that's part yeah, of it. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and, you know, My, Michael and I worked together at the Boston Herald. We, mm -hmm. I was a reporter. He was writing for the music section. And I remember the day that he was leaving the Herald and he said he was going to go do his own thing because the media... The mainstream media was just not doing it anymore. They, you know, if you look at all the mainstream media, they've cut all the arts coverage. Yeah. It's all yeah. been cut. So the only way to get good arts coverage out there these days is, is you know, niche publications. Mm -hmm. um, you know, don't forget Dig Internet, Boston. You get Dig don't Boston. Forget, you know, in the, in, yeah, in the yeah, Vanya Land, yeah. things like that. It's the only place Internet you, radio? you can get local yeah, stuff. Yeah. Internet radio, exactly you know, right. which exactly WEMF. Right. Tell well, us about that. Well, okay. Um, WEMF Radio, I started that. It was, it's in the Sound Museum. Mm -hmm. uh, it stands for Electric Music uh, uh, you can uh, Family. Okay. Well, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we have over 300 bands. Some of them are brand new. Mm -hmm. Some of them have been around like the Bentman for a long time. But, uh, and, and everything in between. So, I mean, what's being built here, I mean, Dave, you could keep going and going and going as yeah, long yeah. as you're on the planet. Yeah. Yeah. And there's some, gr I gotta tell you, from seeing it at the, at the Sound Museum and hearing it, uh, there's some real great bands coming up. Here. Yeah, There really is, and yeah. you know, even with the pushback of some clubs closing and harder, harder and harder to find places to play, and how, you know, uh, radio has changed you know, you mm -hmm. see what's happening to terrestrial radio. So internet radio, we said, well, why don't we start our own? And so we've been promoting the bands. We promote the Sound Museum. We promote our own stuff. Nepotism is in, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> well, yeah, you know? we, you, to the point, your daughter, Casey yeah. Desmond, yeah. has her own thing. She's one of those great bands sure. coming yeah. up right now. Yeah, well, she, Casey she, has great. been in the trenches, and she's out in California doing well. Who knows where that'll go? Yep. But and I wish she was still here. I miss her being, yeah, in, yeah. you know, being yeah. here in Boston. But she's out in California, and she's uh, you know, part of that electronic thing that's going on out yeah. there with yeah. uh, her CMB. Cool. Yeah. And, and Dave, again, when you know Casey is 30 years old now, 31, I think. Mm -hmm. I know. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, Casey. Uh, she's 31, and she's been out there doing it since she was 17 when she played the BCN Rumble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So she's been, you know, she's a pro. She's yeah. been out there playing, and uh, she's seen all the ups and downs of the industry. Yeah. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So, I'm uh, very, very talented and does, you know, tremendous justice to a song that I never thought I could ever like, Little Drummer Boy. She does a <laughs> version of that that is... Chuck White likes that one in yeah, particular, yeah, too. Yeah, that yeah. is... You know, that's a YouTube video we're checking out any season, not just Christmas. <laughs> cool. And yeah. So, Garage Dogs, we're gonna yep. hear a song from you guys. Sure. Yep. Great. Let's do this. Uh, you guys are gonna play World of Shit. We're gonna play World of Shit. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> One of these days, Mom and Dad, everybody gonna make you proud. We'll leave out the dirty words and we won't play so loud. You always fed us while we was broke, always waiting on the band to hit. You always met us in the parking lot at the world of shame. 
world of shit, 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 world of shit. Yeah, you always fed us while we was broke Always waiting on the band to hit You always met us in the parking lot At the world of shit We made it through the cocaine, the snorting and the smoking With none of our bills paid Yeah, we never got signed we never got famous and we never really got laid But we thought the less money we made It only proved we were too great For those tasteless assholes in this world of shit World of shit, world of shit, world of shit World of shit World of shit, world of shit Yeah, we thought the less money we made It only proved we were too great For those tasteless assholes in this world of shit Dogs don't pay attention, but I wish someone had told us about flying too close to the sun. But we made some good records, I guess, and then our time was sadly done. But from Boston to LA, yeah, they're still drunk, and I'm still gay. But we're still your soundtrack in this world of shit. World of shit. World of shit, world of shit, world of shit, world of shit, world of shit. Yeah, from Boston to LA, they're all still drunk, and I'm still gay, but we're still your soundtrack in this world of shit. Why, thank you, Paul. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Um, want to tell us anything about that song? Would it... That song was written in five minutes, and we have written some beautiful fucking songs, and we will be uh, on Wikipedia as the world of shit guys. So there you go. <laughs> All of those great, beautiful, classically, you know, concept albums. It's just, you know, but that's a song for some reason that like everybody who ever was in a band with their friends kind of remembers, you know, there's enough in there. Yeah, yeah, and so. you can really, it's something a lot of bands can relate to, I think, you know. Where, where can, is it on one of your albums? Can people it get is. that? Go ahead. I it's on, yeah, it. no, it's on, <laughs> it's on one of them. <laughs> it's on Withdrawal, which was our last studio record, and it's on The Greatest Hits, which is coming out um, in May. Awesome. And where, where can people find your music if they want to? Um, you can find, we've got a Spotify channel. I don't know who started Spotify. it, but we do. Did you know that? That's fantastic. We have a Spotify yeah, channel. That's awesome. And, uh, <laughs> Breaking and, news. And, 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 I, didn't know, I didn't even know what that was. But I'm, <laughs> you guys have a MySpace or something? Or? Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah. We do. We do. We, we, uh, you can email us. We put us. flyers on telephone poles. You nice. Know, that kind of thing. <laughs> we, we, some of those flyers are probably yeah. in this building. They, they found that's, some, that's the core yeah, of my collection. Yeah, it is. Yeah. So, uh, David, I think you have something yeah, you right. want to I show mean, the guys. Billy, Billy made a, a reference to Lou Reed, and I just, you know, oh. we can pop things out as you talk. Wow. Wow. Conversation I'll piece. I'll show it yeah. over here. That's signed. Lou Reed. Lou Reed. And when Jeez. you were looking for Lou Reed, Velvet there may be an absence. Andy Warhol album. Yeah. yeah, there may be an absence of Lou Reed albums here in the warehouse because I keep a lot of the autographed albums at home. And I think the last count was that I had 28 oh. autographed Lou wow. Reed albums. Wow, that's awesome. Do you have any idea where you came upon that particular one? Well, he kept coming uh, to WBCN. Every time he had a new album out, uh, was promoting it, you know, uh, 
uh, whatever label he was on, and he was really very gracious. You know, wow. he's got this kind of, had the reputation that uh, he was, you know, lacking in certain social skills, but he was very accommodating, and maybe it was because he was on a mission that he wanted to get airplay and he wanted to ingratiate himself to the radio staff. But I never had a problem with him. And in fact, probably one of the earliest things that I ever did as a journalist was writing about a 40-word review for the Boston Globe on the Velvet Underground's third album. Wow. And I think I walked away with $5 for mm -hmm. that. Yeah. So, wow. But, you know, it was, I met him subsequently, and he was really grateful uh, because it was one of those few mainstream media coverages that he got, you know, yeah. back in about 1968, 69. Wow. That's so cool. we have a box we have that we're going to yeah. open here. Yeah. Ch uh, Chuck is going to join us. Yeah. Chuck White from Mother Lord. Yeah. 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 I'm going to go behind you. All right, here. Yeah. Chuck White. Oh, that's a David, I guess. Yeah. Oh, you go next to David. Yeah, slide down a little. We're all family here. So Chuck has a... Oh, because uh, a little backstory to tell about this. This, this, this is little time, and uh, Billy does so many interesting things, but books are a big part of his life. Yeah, no, I love them. Oh, excellent, excellent. Check it out. See, I'll show this. This is uh, So Short a Time, a biography of John Reed mm. and Louise Bryant. You want, you want to tell us the you want, you want, you want significance of this for you, you guys? Start, and I'll give you some gossip. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, this, is, this is basically the first um, radical summer in Provincetown, 1915. Mm -hmm. They couldn't go to Europe that year because war was breaking out, so they ended up, uh, instead of left Greenwich Village, came to Provincetown. And Mabel Dodge, uh, Mary Heaton Vorse, uh, Jack Reed, it all basically was the foundation of what became mm -hmm. Reds, that book. Yeah. Wow. With Warren Beatty. And there's Eugene O'Neill getting dragged to Provincetown. Yeah. It's the very beginning. There's a great picture of Jack Reed. And, oh, it was, um, yeah, it was always, Provincetown was one of those places where it's the reason it was like a communist enclave, a gay enclave, a bohemian enclave, was because you can literally see the police coming from about, you know, 10 miles away. You just get in a boat and fuck off. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, and, you know, it was important for all those groups of people at different times to be able to do that. So um, Still is. Yeah, you're right, you're right. We're, you never know. We might actually ought to check back into this. But, um, have, you, have you read that book? I have not. Have you uh, read it? Oh, yeah, no, it was amazing. I got this, it's I was famous. closing shop therapy in Pasadena, California, and I bought the book, and then I'm sitting there waiting for Ronnie to pick me up wow. in a van. In this Promise Town Playhouse, and yeah. I was like, "What the fuck is this?" Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, "It's just an amazing yeah. tale." Oh, Full shit. circle because you can see, it's like uh, there it is, Province Town reference, but on the uh, bottom of the book, it uh, borrowed from the South Pasadena Public Library. That's really funny. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, it was the no, it was borrowed. The, no, no, it was not. Uh, so it was you still like you I swear. That, you know, close the book God, and yeah. then. But yeah, I mean, you know, yes, so... this is still on loan from the... Uh, <laughs> if it, right back to you. <laughs> it's on the way back. Two cents a day. We'll just have then, to find it. And then uh, something that David doesn't know, I mean, that people don't know about David is his is early promotion stuff. Billy will flip out. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, early on, I was involved with a company called Music Promotions, and we were working with uh, a then unsigned and somewhat undiscovered group, The Modern Lovers. And uh, this is a box of promotional photos of the modern lovers. Holy shit. Oh, wow. So, wow. you know, Let's pick a card, any on. card. <laughs> 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 you see one? I'll put one. There we go. All right, we got more. <laughs> That's great. This is the modern lovers. Anyone, anyone want to take a stab at Des? You want to give some context to the modern lovers? No, I don't. I don't think. I think Dave would be better. Rep, yeah, so. sure. Um, basically, uh, uh, Jonathan Richmond and Ernie Brooks and David Robinson on drums and Jerry Harrison on keyboards and the vintage of this photo was probably about 1971. And wow. uh, they were about to embark on a California trip where they were being wooed by Warner Brothers Records mm -hmm. and A&M Records, and uh, I think they were working with everyone from Kim Folly to John Cale. Uh, from the Velvet Underground. Yeah, exactly. So, so it all Cost ties Colony. together. Uh, Danny Lipman was the guy who owned the company, uh, and uh, Basically, they took off and left a little advertising agency in my hands, and we were handling record accounts like Warner Electro Atlantic, and we were handling the 
Orson Welles Cinema and Restaurant and um, Cheap Thrills and Music City, which wow. were retail record stores. Yeah. And Danny was out promoting The Modern Lovers. And then also, another thing in the box that might make sense for Dez. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Okay, let's, let's take this. That's Surprise. Was this, was this the press kit? Yeah. For yeah. The did bent we, did we actually press kit? send this? To you? Yeah, yeah. That's, uh, <laughs> uh, 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 has uh, old stuff, yeah. stuff magazine. Yeah, Remember stuff oh, magazine. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, That was a, an old article about the bent men from Stuff magazine. I always felt that the bent men logo, the image, the face, it was right there on a par with uh, uh, you know the the the, the Shepherd Fairy image. Yeah, yeah. The uh, obey. There, there is yeah. a story about that. That's actually me. Is that? Uh, yeah, we got signed to a small label, uh, and when we did, we used to use Rondo Hatton. Do you remember Rondo Hatton? Uh, he, that was the logo that we used, the head we used. He was the creeper in all the films. Oh, yeah. oh okay. okay. And, but he, his image, I believe, was, was owned by Universal, so the record uh, label, which is, was Critique Records, actually. Okay. They, they had the Chris of Deneen and... Yeah. I don't know why you know why we were on that label, but yeah. uh, I mean it just didn't make much sense. But uh, you know, anyways, um, so we had a, a, an artist friend of ours, James Edwards, take numerous pictures of me and lay them on top so that we could come up with a a head, yeah. a, a logo. And well, so it's, it's as great. good as uh, Andre the Giant has a posse. It is pretty yeah, cool. It is. We've yeah. kept it. We use it, and it, it, we don't even. We don't even have to put our name on it. We just put the head yeah, up and right, the date yeah. and where we're playing. Right, Everybody right. knows it. So, so. D David, uh, you know, a lot of people that haven't been here or maybe younger people might not really even understand what this exactly is. <laughs> you know, um, the noise. I what, forgot can, we were on the cover of The Noise. You know, and, and even flyers. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, yeah. I, I, this, this is an interesting photograph because this is from City. And Chuck White, who I've become very good friends with, uh, saw the Bentman early on and put us in some very big uh, shows. And I remember we brought in 1,600 people to this show, and on the same series, it was the Privier Vodka series, right? And it was at City, which is now the House of Blues. Well, anyways, uh, uh, what was the big band that was on? It was Chuck. Is he yeah. around? Yeah, right here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. No, he's not around. <laughs> he's, he, he, he's never around when I want him. Uh, the band, Pearl the, Jam. Pearl Jam, that's the biggie. The poster, yeah. I'm but, sorry, the brain, you know. But they were. But Pearl Jam was a fifth. They like had fifth bill on the they poster. They had fifty people there, and yeah. we had sixteen hundred. You know <laughs> what? A few years. You know what can happen? They yeah. were off to the moon. But anyways, that photograph was taken at the end, and I remember I was looking over because they had these. You know these big bouncers there. We and this was just like, I mean there was two feet of gack on the stage and it went out about 35 feet and they were looking at, and they had already chased upside down cross down the street earlier in the <laughs> night break in for breaking Virgin Mary's with hammers yeah we had destroyed the place that's awesome. anyways that is really that's really cool to see that that's, that's awesome. a long time that's so awesome. publications yeah. like that that came out monthly mm -hmm. uh, they probably uh, T Max who was the editor and the publisher probably did that from uh, uh, roughly 1980 mm -hmm. until mm -hmm. last year yeah. when he finally and just J said. Joe, uh, Joe Bonney was part. Was mm -hmm. Joe Bonney yeah. part of T Max? So that was that was. Um, Jeep, uh, Joe Bonney had the pit report. Pit report. And pit report. Started right. yeah, what ended up being the weekly dig. That's right. And yep. you know, yep. I mean, there's so many. Even today, Chris Perone with Dig Boston, and you yep. know, I'm still on the street going to the yeah. to the street boxes for the publications yeah. and it's surprising yeah. how many there are out there yeah. on a regular sustaining publishing yeah. hard copies yeah. out there yeah. it's, it's thrilling it well it's, great. it's great to see and and it, uh, we're actually going to wrap up it's it's so such a great group thank here thank you for having us Des, thank you for being here yeah. david thank you for creating As this always. billy so I great to hear you course. sing and oh, meet sure. you As paul well. Chuck, I'll see you. You'll be around. <laughs> uh, but no, it, it's it's really it's it's such an incredible place, and I'm glad you're sharing this with people, David. Oh, thank, so, you. Yeah, that's thank you. Thank you. It's awesome. Uh, that's unfortunately all the time that we have for now. So thank you for joining us here at live live at the archives from the incredible 
Thanks. David Bieber Archives. If you want to learn more about it, visit davidbieberarchives.com. Uh, special thanks to the Norwood Space Center, which is where the archives are located. Music Drives Us, which is the foundation helping to support uh, this effort. Motherload.tv, Chuck's uh, incredible online uh, portal. And of course, Media Boss. So thank you all so much. Thanks. Thank you.